esto no es una pregunta, es algo que te quiero compartir. Y te lo prometo. Ok. Nadie de los que estábamos en esa sala ayer estábamos viendo el color de tu piel. Todos, todos, incluida mi mujer y mis hijos, estábamos perdidos en tus ojos. Todos. Gracias, gracias. A few moments later. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. And uh-oh, Piscadios. Little Mermaid, not so good. That's right. Little Mermaid now poised to flounder as Disney's worst 2023 opening in China. Now it is only going on June, but uh, I think I suspect why maybe China didn't want to see The Little Mermaid. I don't really want to you know, speculate here because I'm but a humble meme farmer. But that on top of the actress, the lead actress's star you know, complaining and whining about quote unquote microaggressions, it's everything you could have ever hoped for for this film to be. And I sincerely can't wait to see the box office here in the United States. Look, sometimes people just go see movies anyway. Uh, you know, Fast, fa the Fast and the Furious, for example, is a is a series of movies that I have no I, I don't think they're bad I just they're not for me but every time I see the box office I'm constantly blown away this is a movie that made nearly a billion dollars at the height of the lockdowns Fast and Furious has what 10 or 11 movies in their franchise it's got to be one of the highest grossing franchises of all time if not the highest got to be Little Mermaid oof, not starting out very good Now, report Little Mermaid poised to flounder as Disney's worst 2023 opening live action remake stinks. Um, while getting a release date can be seen as a success on its own, recent estimates, that is in China, recent estimates suggest the film is likely to be Disney's worst performing Chinese release this year. According to Chinese box office observers such as Luis Fernando, The film earned just $13,000 from pre-sales for its opening weekend, indicating a severe lack of interest from China's moviegoers. Meanwhile, in China's box office, pre-ticket sales for The Little Mermaid show no signs of reaction. Disney's live action finished Sunday with a scary $13,000 total after three days of pre-sales for the whole of May 25th to 28th period could be the worst opening ever for Hollywood tentpole in China. For comparison, Disney's Cruella, which was the last live action adaptation hit Chinese theaters, also predicted to earn low figures and ultimately grossed $1.6 million on opening and $24 million over its entire theatrical run in China. Mulan, which was the last live action remake to be for the coup, grossed $307,000 in a day of pre-sales and $23 on opening, leading to $40.7 million over the course of his theatrical run in China. Although, I didn't they like pull it or something like that? They released their own. There was some weirdness there. What appeared to be a... Oh, yeah. What appeared to be a ban on Hollywood films was list, lifted following the abandonment of China's strict zero-coup policy. And numerous reports suggest theaters across the country were on the verge of bankruptcy. Still, Hollywood films have struggled to see the same level of success that numerous, numerous titles saw prior. Uh, well, because they're producing their own. In recent months, there have been greater scrutiny placed on Hollywood studios and their relationship with Chinese firms and, by extension, the Chinese government. U.S. lawmakers recently met with studio execs, including CEO, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger, to discuss these relationships. During these meetings, Iger reportedly admitted that the company had made mistakes when it came to confronting the requests of the Chinese authorities. Moreover, it was reported that the company had seen the controversy sounding surrounding 2020's Mulan and adjusted the process for future films, though it's uncertain how exactly it was actually changed. Not a good look. $13,000 on pre-sales for that compared to $300,000 for Mulan. Now, Mulan obviously was probably supposed to hit better there. However, Halle Berry also 
I mean, this film is a, this is what happens when you hire a bunch of woke like social justice warriors and and you you hope that stands. Look, the film could still make a billion dollars. A billion dollars. I I can't because I can't predict Disney movies anymore. Who would have thought the Lion King that looked ridiculous that made a billion dollars? But you know what I do know for sure is that if the Halle Berry Little Mermaid remake doesn't make a billion dollars, it's going to be because of racism. The Little Mermaid star Halle Bailey recently complained about tasteless comments she had to face during international re- interviews, uh, asking Disney executives not to expose her to similar situations again. Disney's live-action adaptation of the beloved classic Little Mermaid has been highly discussed since the film and its casting were first announced. Divided audiences that sparked polarizing opinions regarding the upcoming movie, while singer and actress Halle Berry has bravely spoken out on the racism and backlash against her casting as Princess Ariel. Well, she's not Princess Ariel. We know what Princess Ariel is. She's white with red hair. There were black mermaids in that in the original film, I believe, or at least in the spinoffs. So no, this was a purely um, PR, uh, let's, let's make this white character black instead of creating a new character. Well, conservatives and people who aren't woke, do you have another push in you? Can you make this the next Bud Light? Now, uh, so... A recent experience disgusted the young actress who reportedly came to Disney's higher executives asking never to be exposed to similar situations during the internet. Now, wait till you hear what happened. It's ridiculous. She's up getting upset over nothing. During the international premiere of The Little Mermaid in Mexico City, local journalists interviewed the young actress and Spanish actor Javier Bardem at multiple entertainment programs. Unfortunately, what was supposed to be a standard interview international tour ended up being unpleasant for Halle Bailey. Ooh, I'm so sorry who faced out-of-touch comments from an Argentinian, Argentinian actor, Patricio Borghetti, during an interview in the Mexican Morning Show. During the nearly seven-minute interview, Halle was asked about her experiences visiting Mexico. Oh, no. How her role as Ariel has impacted her life. Oh, and her relationship with fellow actors. Terrible. However, about halfway through the interview, Patricio stopped to tell Halle, quote, this isn't a question it's something I want to share with you. I promise no one in the movie theater was looking at your skin color last night. Everyone, everyone, including my wife and children, was lost in your eyes. Everyone. With these comments, while these comments were made in good faith, according to the Argentinian actor, Hallie's body language and facial expressions showed the discomfort after hearing them and during the rest of the interview as they inevitably felt racially charged. Hello? First of all, this dude, I don't know if Patricio is a dude or a girl. I assume it's a guy was obviously trying to address that and say like, hey, uh, obviously you're not white with red hair, but you did so great, it didn't matter. Like, uh, He was obviously trying to like be supportive. While Mexican culture and its understanding of racism and black culture cannot be compared to American standards. Oh, that sounds racist. Borghetti's comments inevitably felt out of touch. I think they were fine. I think he was just trying, maybe English is in his first language, first of all. Second of all, it sounds like um, they were just saying like, hey, don't worry about all the people who have a problem with the race swap. Uh, they eventually caused Hallie to reportedly complain to some of the Disney higher executives, questioning why she was brought to Mexico and asking never to be involved with interactions with unprepared journalists. During the same interview, Bailey commented on she tried to focus on positivity and seeing all the beautiful children and babies react to the dolls, which are on clearance, by the way, to the mermaid like me and looks like them. But even all the positivity in the world could not ignore the tone-deaf comments Halle Bailey had to face. What? There's no way anyone actually thinks. Yeah, Disney Homegirl isn't the Little Mermaid, never will be. I can't understand these actors wanting me to spotlight you, getting all upset when they get attention. I mean, but then you get this too. This woman, uh, Aquafina, who's been constantly, um, you know, uh, roasted for her black scent and, and cult- uh, cultural appropriation. By the way, also in Little Mermaid, Aquafina slammed for Little Mermaid. This is the same. This is the same week. 
Several comments uh, in a song written for Scuttle's Ariel, Ariel Seagull friend, who gives Ariel knowledge and advice on how to deal with the human world. Scuttle, played by Aquafina, is given the song The Scuttlebutt. True to style, for uh, the, the song is a fast rap and has many fans wondering what the point was. Several comments mentioned that the rap song became Lin-Manuel's signature at this point, but that doesn't mean it's always necessary. We don't need his raps in every movie, actually. Uh, the sisters don't sing, but I have to listen to Little Miss Black Scent rap. Lin-Manuel Miranda needs to be arrested. Uh, while several songs had lyrics added or changed, it also completely removed the opening songs, The Daughters of Triton, and in which Ariel's sisters sang and introduced themselves. The cut has many people upset, especially concerning the songs were added to the film. Several comments asked if the Scuttlebutt song was made up. Please say psych. Other posts mentioned that Aquafina is actually able to put her talent to use. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, this is, this is the crowd that you courted. Now, here's the IMAX photo, uh, which a lot of people are pointing out that it looks like she's lit up. I mean, she's clearly not black, but, well, I mean, to me, I mean, I know she is, so I can see it, but it's, like, kind of ambiguous. And people were thinking that maybe she was lighting for this, but this is also the same photo they used for um, the IMAX in the United States, so that may not be the case, but it also may be the case that they chose to use this in uh, in China on purpose. I mean, the, the entire thing is hilarious. Halle Bailey complains about racism. During, it wasn't even... Oh, my God. Oh, please let this movie flop. Please let this movie flop. Please. I sincerely hope it does. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure you leave a like on it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe down below. We'll talk to you again real soon.